T-Mobile and OnePlus both suffer data breaches and Android cameras can be hijacked. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse and this is ThreatWire for November 26, 2019. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. If you are interested in supporting ThreatWire on Patreon, hit up patreon.com slash ThreatWire. It's because of the generosity of people that watch this show that I am able to make it every single week. So as a thank you, I am giving away limited edition holiday cards to everybody who signs up at any perk level. Thank you so much, and now on to the news. The Chinese smartphone manufacturer OnePlus has suffered their second notable data breach, this time exposing the personal details of information on its online store customers. OnePlus last week posted an FAQ on their website and started emailing affected customers. Ziv C of the OnePlus security team also posted a security notification on the community forum. OnePlus discovered an unauthorized party had access to order information for the online store, including names, contact number, addresses, and email addresses. After the discovery last week, OnePlus determined that payment info, passwords, and accounts were not accessed in the breach. The company stated that they took immediate steps to reinforce their security and they are working with authorities to investigate. They also warned users that they may receive spam or phishing emails due to the breach of data. Not all users were affected, so if you did not receive a security notification email, chances are you are not one of the affected. OnePlus also advised customers to contact them if they do have any concerns or any questions. Now, OnePlus did not disclose how many customers were affected, nor how the attacker gained access. The website and pertaining information was, in all honesty, pretty vague. A quick scroll through the community forum shows that many affected users had made purchases actually months ago, so I am curious how long the attacker had access or how the data is being stored on OnePlus's servers and if that is compliant with recent policies. Now, this is not the first time that OnePlus has had a security issue. The website was hacked way back in January of 2018, which allowed an attacker to steal credit card information for 40,000 customers. OnePlus was finally forced to take stronger security measures, though. According to the FAQ, the company will be implementing a bug bounty program by the end of 2019, yay, in which they said that they are partnering with a world-renowned security platform. Now, OnePlus is deep sorry about this and is strengthening their security to ensure that this never happens again. How many times have we heard that? According to a report by Checkmarks, which is an Israeli security vendor, flaws in Android devices could have allowed an attacker to gain access to a victim's location or take photos and videos from a vulnerable device without the user ever knowing. This problem affects Google Pixel phones and Samsung Galaxy phones through their voice assistant technology via Google Assistant or Samsung Bixby. This could potentially affect a much broader range of Android devices as well. Both of these voice-activated assistants do not ask for further permissions to use the camera, and this also allows less trusted apps to abuse that convenience as well. In this case, the researchers created a proof-of-concept weather app that could ask the voice assistants for access. This access request could allow the third-party weather app to send Google Assistant or Samsung Bixby a request for camera access, which they could use to start filming or taking photos without the owner's consent. This bug is tracked at CVE 2019-2234, and it happens because of a permission bypass flaw. Now, since both of the assistants could allow an attacker to bypass any additional permissions, they could turn on the camera while the device is locked or it's being used for another application, like taking a phone call. Now, users usually need to accept permission requests for new apps, but the storage permission, which is generally accepted and is used to save photos to your device's storage, is broad and it gives access to the entire storage drive. They were able to use this to force the photo app to open and store new images or videos to the internal drive and also to an attacker's server. And since GPS tags or location info could be used in the photo, the attacker could also get this as well. 
Now, to make the vulnerability even creepier, the researchers were able to use the proximity sensor in the phones to determine when they are laying face down or on a table or when the device is being held to an ear during a phone call. They could then activate recording on both sides of the conversation through the video and camera app. Now, with all of this said, it would not be completely hidden. The camera application would appear on the device's screen while in use, but if it's on a nightstand and you're asleep, or if it's held to an ear, you would not actually be able to see the screen at that time. It would also be relatively hard to pull off without detection from the user, given that you can see the camera app when it's recording, if it's in front of you. Now, even so, Google marked this as a high severity flaw, and they pursued a fix right after discovery. Google and Samsung both patched these vulnerabilities and they were first announced in July and the report was published four months later following responsible disclosure. Google was initially informed on July 4th and they had a CVE for it on August 1st. A camera update has been released since then and a video of the proof of concept successfully working is available in the links provided. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. I am putting together those annual physical rewards for this year, so keep an eye on the updates on the Patreon page. Also, I want to start a security and privacy audio podcast as a part of the ThreatWire feed, and that would be a much broader, much in detail story about all of the news that's happening each week. That's my next Patreon goal, so if you want to help, check out my community. The link is in the description below, and if you want a holiday card from me, make sure to sign up before December 11th at any of the perk levels. Also, a huge thank you to our Hush Puppy perk level patrons for sending in their fur baby photos. I love them, so keep them coming. Just one day before OnePlus's notification came, a disclosure from T-Mobile about their own security breach was also publicized. According to T-Mobile, this breach affected a small number of prepaid users, and it exposed data including names, billing addresses, phone numbers, account numbers, rate plans, and plan features. No passwords, financial information, or social security numbers were accessed. T-Mobile stated in their notifications that rate plans and features are called Customer Proprietary Network Information, or CPNI, under the FCC ruling, and that requires that T-Mobile provide notice of the incident. This kind of makes it sound like T-Mobile may not have provided notice of the breach if the data only included your billing address name and your phone number and your account number, which could still be used for identity theft. Now, T-Mobile's cybersecurity team discovered the breach and they shut down the unauthorized access and law enforcement has been notified. T-Mobile is currently reaching out to affected customers and if a customer has changed their number or switched providers, T-Mobile recommends emailing privacy at t-mobile.com or getting in contact with customer service since they may not have your current contact information and you may still be impacted. Now, if you were impacted, change your password and your PIN codes just to be on the safe side. Now, while T-Mobile did not disclose exact numbers, TechCrunch was told affected users account for 1.5% of customers, which equals a little over a million. T-Mobile was also quite vague about specific details so we do not know how the data was breached, what T-Mobile is doing exactly to fix that problem, or how long the data was actually being leaked. They did state that the attack was discovered in early November, but discovery and actual start date of an attack can vary significantly. This breach comes just a year after T-Mobile experienced another incident where names, email addresses, phone numbers, and account information was leaked for 2 million customers. But as with last time, T-Mobile takes your security very seriously. Now, before I leave, I would like to say thank you so much to Beach, Timmy Doomsday, Ata, Tyler, and Vate, who joined the Patreon team this week. Thank you all. Y'all are awesome. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'm Shannon Morris, and I will see you on the internet.